teachers, welcome to class. My name is Mrs. Papineau and I am a first grade teacher at BF Day Elementary School. I am really excited to be back with you for another week of learning all about wondering while we read. I want to remind you about the book we read last week called The Pet Show. We learned how wondering or asking questions before, during, and after we read a story can help us better understand what we've read. It's a great skill to have. So before we get started today, I want to make sure you've chosen your turn and talk partner. Remember, this can be somebody in your house, this can be a pet, this can be a stuffy, or you can just pretend to give me a call and tell me all about your awesome thinking. Remember, my turn and talk partner is this fellow, Friend Fox. He is super excited to get started today. Now, remember, there are three main phrases we can use when we want to ask a question or wonder. We can start with, I wonder if, or I wonder what, or I wonder who. These are all different ways to have a wondering and ask questions while we read. We are going to practice this skill today with a nonfiction book. So a book that's full of true facts not a made-up story this time. So let's take a look. Today's story is called Bears in the Forest. It is written by Karen Wallace and it is illustrated by Barbara Firth. Remember, illustrated means what? That's right, they drew the pictures. So readers, remember before we get started, we are going to wonder by looking at the cover of this book and asking some questions about the text. So, will you turn to your partner right now and share what you wonder already about this book? I'm going to go to Friend Fox. Mm -hmm. Aha, Friend Fox has some good wonderings. I bet you do too. Let's take a look at our chart. We are wondering before we read Bears in the Forest. I wonder if we will find out about the bears on the cover. Hmm. I wonder if these are baby bears. I wonder where the forest is. Hmm. Wow, great thinking readers. I bet you have even more wonderings that aren't even on our chart. All right, friends, make sure you have your listening ears and eyes on for today's story. Remember, the title is Bears in the Forest. Deep in a cave, a mother bear sleeps. She is huge and warm. Her heart beats slowly. Outside, it is cold and the trees are covered with snow. Her newborn cubs are blind and tiny. They find her milk and begin to grow. Snow slips from the trees and melts on the ground. The ice has broken on the lake. Mother Bear wakes. Her long sleep is over. She leads her cubs down to the lake shore. She slurps and slurps. That means she drinks really loudly. She slurps and slurps the freezing water. Leaves burst from their buds. That means they shoot out. There are frogs eggs in the lake. Mother bear snuffs the air. She smells the air. Mother bear snuffs the air for strange smells, listens for strange sounds. Her cubs know nothing of the forest. This is their first spring. Mother bear must take care. Well, what have we learned so far, readers, about bears in the forest? What have we learned? Give me a call. Good thinking, yes. We have learned that baby bears are born in the winter. Wow, have we learned anything else? Oh, right. 
So it it's spring. It's springtime, right? Yeah. And this is the cub's first spring since they were just born in the winter. Yes. Thanks for doing such great thinking, readers. Let's keep going. The summer sun is hot. Mother bear sits in a tree stump. Angry bees buzz around her head and stolen honey drips from her paws. Her two skinny bear cubs wrestle in the long grass. They whinny and squeal and roll over and over away from their mother. Mother bear growls. Come back! There are dangers in the forest. Her cubs do not hear her. Mother bear snorts. She is angry. She strides across the meadow. That means she takes big, long steps. Helps her go more quickly toward the bears. She strides across the meadow and whacks them with a heavy paw. Ooh. Do you have some questions after reading this page? Yeah, let's do some wondering right now. Will you turn to your partner? What do you wonder right now? I'm going to find some thoughts. Friend Fox has been doing some thinking while we've been reading together. What's that? Oh, me too. He wonders why Mother Bear is so angry. Was that one of your wonderings too? Let's look at our chart. See, he wrote his idea. I wonder why Mother Bear is so angry. Hmm, maybe you had this wondering. I wonder what dangers are in the forest. Mm. I wonder what other animals are in the forest. Yeah, we haven't really seen very many animals other than the bears, have we? Thanks for wondering with me. Let's keep going. Two frightened bear cubs scramble, that means they go really quickly, kind of clumsily, up the nearest tree. Two frightened bear cubs scramble up the nearest tree. Mother bear waits below, still as a statue, listening to the forest. When she feels safe, she will call her cubs down. Mother bear must take care. Soon, the days grow shorter and squirrels start to hide acorns. Acorns are tree nuts. Bushes are bright with berries. Seed pods flutter to the ground. Winter is coming. Mother bear and her cubs eat everything they can find. Wow, readers. I bet you have some questions after reading this page. Let's think it through. What do you wonder? Turn to your partner or give me a call. Wow, one first grader wonders, what exactly are the bears eating? Yeah, me too. It says they're eating everything they can find. I wonder what? Hmm. Oh, friend Fox has an idea too. Friend Fox, let's look at your idea. Oh, friend Fox says, I wonder where they will go in the winter. Interesting. Oh, and I had another kindergartner ask, I wonder if bears eat anything else. Oh, so like after this. Wow, readers, excellent job today. Now, we're going to stop here in our story, but I did want to ask you, go back through your mind. Let's talk a little bit about what the bears in the forest have done so far. Sometimes when I'm thinking back through what I've read, I like to look at the pictures to help me out. So, hmm, what have the bears in the forest done so far? Well, let's think about it, readers. They were born, right? So they were born. And what happened next? Hmm, they learned from their mom, right? They followed her around. And they had their first spring. Remember that? Oh, remember? The mom is sort of leading them through the forest. And they're having a good time. The bears were playing. I remember them doing that. 
I also remember the mom bear getting pretty angry and upset. Do you remember why, though? Yeah, she was trying to keep them safe. And then right at the end where we stopped today, it sounded to me like they were getting ready for winter time. Hmm. Now, remember, readers, when we come to the end of a part in a story like we did today, or even the end of a book, we still keep wondering. That means we're still thinking about what we've read. And I want to show you how you can do this on your own today using paper and pen. So see if you can find any old piece of paper around your house. I'm going to use a piece of lined paper that I found. And I'd like to show you how you can practice wondering with reading, writing, and drawing on your own. So here's my piece of paper. And I still have a wondering about this story. Do you want to hear it? Okay. My wondering is, when will the cubs leave their mom? Will the cubs stay with the mom through the whole story, the whole book, or will they go live on their own? So what I did is I drew a picture of the two bear cubs. So here's my drawing, two bear cubs. And I want my writing to match the wondering that's in my mind. Okay, so I start, I wonder. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down, I wonder. I wonder if the cubs will leave, okay, whoa, 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 if, if, leave their mom. I wonder if the cubs will leave their mom. Yeah, that's a wondering I have. I bet you have some amazing wonderings of your own. So take some time, find a piece of paper anywhere you can around your house and grab a pen or pencil and see if you can draw a picture and a matching sentence about something you wonder about bears in the forest. And take your time. You might want to come back and work on it a little bit later. I think I am for sure. I'm going to add some forest in the background of my drawing. And, you know, I might even have another wondering later and I can add to my, to my paper. So don't lose track of this. I want to hear your ideas tomorrow. Okay. Before we go to independent reading, let's talk a little bit about two new words we learned today in the text. One of those words is slurp, slurp. There is a picture of a kid slurping. It looks like maybe they're slurping some hot chocolate or something like that. Remember, slurping means to drink loudly. You might slurp hot cocoa because it's too hot for your mouth, so you might go slurp. Let's play a game. I'm going to read two sentences to you, and I would like you to decide which one you think sounds most like slurping. Okay, let's get started. Okay, sentence one. The children were eating their soup very loudly. Okay, here's number two. The bird was drinking water from the side of the lake. Which sentence do you think describes slurping? I'm hearing a lot of you say sentence one. Why does that one describe slurping? I hear you saying, I think sentence one describes slurping because the children are eating their soup loudly. They are slurping. Good for you learners. Okay, you ready for our other word? Other word I read in the story that I'd love for you to know a little bit more about today is this word stride. Do you see this picture? This person is striding because they are taking big long steps when they walk. If you stride you can get somewhere a little bit more quickly because you're taking really big steps. So let's play our game again. I'm going to read two sentences and I'd like you to tell me which one you think best fits stride. Okay, sentence one. The little dog ran quickly across the park. Or 
the tall man walked across the street. What do you think? Sentence two, the tall man walked quickly across the street describes when someone is striding. He's able to stride because he's tall and he has really long legs so he can take big long steps. The dog running across the park has little legs and probably can't stride very well because his legs are short and tiny. Nice job learners. Great job learning about our two words from today, slurp and stride. All right, it's time for independent reading, my favorite. I wanna show you how you can practice wondering while you're doing reading on your own. It's a great way to make sure you're understanding what you read. And it's pretty fun because you get to write and draw. Let me show you the book that I started today. It's a great one. It's this book right here. It's called Kitchen Dance. And I also found this sheet of paper in this week's packet. And it looks just like this. Now last week we practiced retelling a story. Remember we went beginning, middle, and end. This time we're going to practice wondering at the beginning, middle, and end of each story. So I wanna show you the first couple pages of this book and share with you how I wrote and drew about my wondering. So again, this book is called Kitchen Dance and it starts like this. Grape, splash, clunk, clang. I wake up and listen. Through the walls and floor, I hear kitchen sounds. Glasses clinking, water swishing, forks clattering. Then something else, a deep voice humming a tune. And someone laughing, hush. I slip out of my blankets to climb up to where Tito sleeps. Oye, do you hear? Tito listens, he rubs the sleep from his eyes, and we climb down the ladder. So learners, right here in this book, here's my wondering. I am wondering, are they waking up in the morning or at nighttime? It's kind of dark in their room, but morning can be dark and so can nighttime. So here's what I did. I drew a picture of the girl in the bed waking up. And I'm going to use my words to describe my wondering. Remember, I'm going to start, I wonder. So I'm going to write, I wonder if, I wonder if it is morning or night. And you know what I'm going to use right here? I wonder if it is morning or night. So readers, as you read your books on your own, I'd like you to continue doing this great job of wondering in the middle and the end of your story. Remember each time you're going to start, I wonder. Awesome job. Readers, it has been such a great time with you today. I hope you're practicing wondering on your own and I will see you next time for our next lesson. And we'll finish the book. All right, see you soon.